We're standing still. Blue leader to group. Get off the air. Going by at 2 o'clock. What the hell is it? Smith with Agent Smith Voice Productions. Of the many Wunderwaffens the Germans produced during the Second World War, such as the V-1 flying bomb and V-2 rocket, nothing compared to the legendary Messerschmitt Me-163 Comet. The only rocket-powered interceptor in history, this truly unique and strange aircraft looked like something straight out of a science fiction movie. Designed by Alexander Lippis, the comet had an incredible impact on the course of aviation history. In today's World War II video, I briefly discuss a few fascinating facts on the ME-163 and an incredible true story of how two American P-51 Mustangs managed to shoot down whilst dogfighting the comet at full power. The ME-163 Comet was, in many ways, a phenomenal feat of German engineering. Hannah Weisch, a Luftwaffe test pilot who flew many German aircraft, explains that the Comet had left a great impression on her. And I can only tell you, it was fascinating. It was like thundering through the skies, sitting on a cannonball, like being intoxicated by speed. It was not difficult to uh, fly it, it was only an overwhelming impression. At the end of the airfield, of the airfield boundary, you already reached about 500 miles per hour and with constant speed, you were climbing up in one and a half to two minutes into a height of 30,000 feet. In early July 1944, Luftwaffe test pilot Henry Dittmer reached an unofficial flight airspeed record of 624 miles per hour. During that record-breaking flight, Dittmar had probed the edges of what we today call the sound barrier. Whilst this was certainly a legendary feat in aviation history, the 163 Comet was plagued with several technical complications. The fuels utilized by the Comet Walter engine were codenamed Tischdorf, 
which stands for hydrogen peroxide, and Seestoff, or methanol alcohol. When these were mixed together, they produced an extremely violent reaction, as shown in this amazing section of archive footage. Seestoff was also capable of spontaneous combustion when it came into contact with any organic material, which this footage also demonstrates. To compensate for this dangerous concoction, Comet pilots had to wear special protective clothing, but despite this extra layer of protection, some pilots were dissolved alive, and many of the 163s were destroyed by the murderous fuel. Another problem that the comet faced was the detachment of the special dolly undercarriage. There were well-sprung independent suspensions for each wheel, and as the aircraft took off, the springs would rebound, throwing the dolly upward and striking the aircraft. This was fixed in the more powerful version of the comet. This version, the B variant, used simpler crossed beam axled dollies and relied on a specialized retractable skid when landing. The first type that entered combat service against the Allied forces was the ME-163B, as the A variant was not truly optimized for large scale mass production. It was armed with two 30mm MK-108 cannons. Whilst these packed a powerful punch, the speed of the comet worked against it, because the pilots had immense difficulty training these cannons on the aircraft they stalked. The rocket fuel only lasted for seven minutes, after which pilots faced the most dangerous part of the mission, gliding back to base, in which they were defenseless against prowling allied fighters. It was during this gliding stage that many 163s were shot down, but occasionally the 163 would dogfight with Allied fighters in full power. The fighter in question was the American P-51 Mustang. The story of the intense dogfight that occurred between these aircraft came on the 2nd of November 1944. Unlike a conventional Luftwaffe piston engine fighters that took roughly 30 minutes to climb and intercept American bomber formations, the Comet had no such problems. Upon the go signal, everything happened very rapidly. Within just three minutes, the Comet could reach 30,000 feet and possessed enough fuel in which to engage and attack the American bombers. Jacques Schwader 400 which was the first operational unit of ME-163s, was situated at Brandis. Suddenly, they were alerted to an incoming formation of B-17s on a mission to strike critical oil targets in central Germany. At least 11 ME-163s rose to intercept them. One of the P-51 Mustangs, piloted by Captain Fred W. Glover, was leading the fourth fighter group when all of a sudden, he noticed a contrail rocketing upwards at tremendous speed towards the B-17s. The ME-163 Comet leveled out at 25,000 feet, turning back towards the bomber formation in a slighter dive. Jettisoning his external fuel drop tanks, Glover turned his fighter towards the ME-163 on a convergence course. The rocket-powered aircraft thundered in front of his P-51, and in response, Glover made a quick 90-degree turn, falling in behind the Comet. With the aircraft in his sights, Glover let loose a burst of heavy 50 caliber machine gun fire. He registered several hits on the tail, cockpit, and wings of the aircraft from a range of 400 yards. The belly of the Comet violently exploded, and Glover overshot with his next burst of machine gun fire. As he looked back at the severely damaged aircraft, he could see that the tail had completely blown off and the canopy was riddled with bullet holes. Glover eventually pulled up to search for another target as the crippled ME-163 spiraled out of control down to Earth. 
One of the pilots from the 4th Fighter Group reported to Glover to confirm that the pilot of the ME-163 Oberwörterfebel, Gunter Andreas, had successfully managed to bail out of his damaged aircraft to safety. Meanwhile, another P-51 Mustang, piloted by Captain Lewis H. Norley, was leading the 335 Fighter Squadron of the 4th Fighter Group when he spied an ME-163 coming down at his 6 o'clock position. After jettisoning his external fuel tanks, Norley powered up to full throttle after his new target, which was just out of range of his new K-14 sight. He eventually got behind the 163 and tailed it. As the Comet began to pull away, Norley's heavy 50 caliber machine guns blazed to life. a few short bursts, hoping that his target would turn. It seems that luck was on his side, for the comet went into a port turn and its speed dropped significantly. Norley stated, I closed on him rapidly. I was using a K-14 sight for the first time. However, I did get a couple of strikes on the tail, firing from 250, closing to 50 yards. My speed was around 450 miles per hour when I got into range. I throttled back, but was unable to stay in the turn with him due to excessive speed. I overshot him, pulled up, and got on his tail again. Up to this time, he had not been using his blower, at least he was not emitting any black smoke. As I closed on him the second time, he punched on his blower for a couple of seconds, and then cut it off again. I closed to 400 yards, fired again, and saw strikes on the tail. The 163 rolled over and plummeted straight down from 8,000 feet, fire flashing from his port side and exhaust. He slammed into a small village and the aircraft exploded. The Comet's pilot, Oberwörterfeber Jakob Bollenroth, was unable to bail out of his stricken aircraft and was killed in the ensuing explosion. The utilization of the 163 to hopefully turn the tide of the war in Germany's favor would prove to be a failure. By then, Germany was lacking sufficient manpower and resources due to excessive bombing campaigns and Allied air superiority. But in other aspects, Lippisch's brilliant design did have a tremendous effect on the course of aviation history and ushered in a new era of rocket-powered technology. Before I conclude today's video, I want to share a few photographs of the ME-163 that I took at the Australian War Memorial in Canberra in 2019. This particular comet was captured by Allied forces in May 1945 at Husum in Germany. It was one of a group of stored machines believed to be a replacement for Jacques Schwader 400. Thank you so much as always for watching, I really enjoy making these history videos. And don't forget to give us a like and to subscribe for more content. Finally, a shout out to my awesome subscribers for your ongoing support of the channel. Liam Smith with Agent Smith Voice Productions. Until then, stay tuned. I'll see you next time.